I like fiction. Mm -hmm. I just know I'm pretty busy. Yeah. I usually yeah. read fiction when I go went to when I travel, go on a plane. That's when I get. Oh, go. <laughs> yes, right, right. That's my time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so. Welcome to Behind the Pages. Michael Levy is with us today. Michael is a psychologist. He also is the director of addiction services at the North Shore Medical Center. He lectures at the Harvard uh, University Medical School as well, and he's here today to talk about celebrity entertainment and obsession. This is a book that explores the public's growing interest, uh, actually obsession in some cases, of people who the media has made into celebrities. Welcome, Michael. No, thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Um, let's start by sort of looking at terms. Uh, what's the difference between a celebrity and a hero? Okay. Well, I believe a hero mm -hmm. uh, has done something very, uh, I think, significant and important mm -hmm. for society. And it can be little things or it can be big things. I mean, mm -hmm. A hero is somebody who, you know, sees somebody hurting on the street and does something very positive for them. Mm -hmm. uh, a celebrity is a big name. You mm -hmm. know, and I think it's something that the media has created, and you know, people who are in the public eye, mm -hmm. uh, again, it's a, a big person versus a big name. And mm -hmm. people who are, are uh, celebrities, people have an interest in them and want to know what they're doing and the clothes they're wearing and where mm -hmm. they're eating and, you know, what they're up yeah. to in their lives. <laughs> sort of less about what they do than what happens prior to them doing it, you know, like uh, what yeah. they, as you said, what they eat. Yeah, because um, so. yeah, some celebrities are really, uh -huh. uh, I say, famous for being famous, mm -hmm. and they're just you know they're in the public eye, right, TV or magazines or, 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 or movies, things like that, mm -hmm. and people don't know that much about them. They mm -hmm. have an interest in knowing about them, but they're really most focused on kind of you know, how they achieved you know, celebrityhood or stardom, mm -hmm. really, uh, and what they do in that regard. And mm -hmm. and uh, most people, uh, or a lot of people, I should say, uh, seem to want to be. S would like to actually be a celebrity themselves. Don't you think that they find this attractive, this idea of being a celebrity? Oh, I think definitely true. I think mm -hmm. a, a big theme, I think, in society, especially I think some younger people, mm -hmm. is to achieve some kind of recognition and fame. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think one reason I think people are so, I say, obsessed with mm -hmm. celebrities or people who are well-known and famous is because that's something uh, latently, they really want for themselves, and mm -hmm. when someone achieves that, I think uh, it doesn't really matter the reason why they have achieved it. The fact that they have mm -hmm. makes us interested in them because I think it's something that we want for ourselves. And actually, there's mm -hmm. some research that supports that. If, if we, if I, I can even discuss uh, mm -hmm. one interesting study that oh, looked go ahead. at that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. There was a study that looked at the two most popular TV programs mm -hmm. in 1967, 1977, 87. 97 and 2007 among mm -hmm. uh, younger people okay and uh, what they found and they looked at the TV shows there were 16 different values like mm -hmm. being a good person uh, being physically healthy uh, doing something positive for society or interest in fame mm -hmm. things like that or vocational interest what they found was of 16 values in 1967 77 87 and 97 fame came through it was 15th out of 16th mm -hmm. In 2007, it was number one. That was the major theme of all these different shows, becoming mm -hmm. famous. So I think uh, it really says a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it does. Now, you're a psychologist, and one of the things you mentioned in your book is that what drew you to this field was sort of uh, it, it, when you realized how much how people act and how people think is, is a part of what drives the world as a whole. Can you tell us about that in a little bit more detail? You mean how I, wh what made me interested in becoming a psychologist? Yes. Yeah, I, it was, uh, I initially started off, I was going to be a medical doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, I took a biology course, and, uh, and then the next course was a zoology course, and I said, well, I'm not really that interested in zoology. Yeah. Uh, but there was so much going on in the world, I really was exposed, you know, I went to undergrad at you know, Boston University, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam War, and, you know, strife, and conflict, and all this kind of thing, and uh, mm -hmm. I really said, you know, what really drives the world are people, and how people think, mm -hmm. and what drives them. So I got be very interested in just really people mm -hmm. and how they think. So I decided to become a psychologist, and I changed my major. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got out of undergrad, I decided to work in the field for a couple of years, and I decided I do like this work. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just sort of go on to uh, graduate school mm -hmm. to become a psychologist. Uh, so uh, 
and you know, back to this whole you know celebrity obsession, we cannot yeah. forget about the importance of people in all this process because sure. there are things that influence us. But you know, there are certain attributes about people which make this such a uh, profound motif, and I think in, in our society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what are the kind of the uh, things that are common to all of us as a species? That that, are that dude, yeah, lead okay. to yes, um, okay. our interest anyway in sure, <laughs> celebrities. Yeah. Uh, I, I give yeah. you certainly a handful of them. Like one mm -hmm. is. We love, as, as, a, as a species, really, to be entertained. Mm -hmm. And we love novelty. I mean, mm -hmm. who as an adult hasn't tried to uh, uh, work with a, ch a young child, get the child to laugh, or play a game over and over and over again? Mm -hmm. Because as, as soon as we finish the game, what does the child want to do? They want to do it again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and also, I think, just from a, uh, a survival point of view, we mm -hmm. need to be attuned to our environment. And, and, and novelty grabs us. Mm -hmm. so that's a very important piece, just, I think, our need to be entertained. And uh, our need for novelty, mm -hmm. very important. Uh, another piece uh, that is relevant, I think, is our absolute love of beauty. Mm -hmm. and we love beautiful people. And we, many people kind of do everything they can do themselves to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I think this whole uh, uh, interest in, in beauty and beautiful people is also another element that kind of fuels mm -hmm. our, uh, I think, addiction to celebrities, really. Yeah. Uh, another attribute. Uh, given I focus my career on, is we all have, an, I think there's an addictive vulnerability in all of us. And mm -hmm. we like to repeat things that make us feel good. Mm -hmm. We want to do them over and over again. And when we think about it, we think of things like, you know, uh, drugs or mm -hmm. alcohol or gambling. And I believe what's occurred over time is that our, it gets more, m more involved, but mm -hmm. our need for entertainment has been absolutely captured and captivated by the media industry, mm -hmm. so much so to the point that we come to rely on that to feel good for mm -hmm. a lot of different reasons. And it really has you know, captured our brain just like a drug can capture our brain. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in moderation, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being entertained. Right. Just like in moderation, there's nothing wrong with you know, having a glass of wine or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I do believe it's become a national preoccupation, this kind of obsession with being entertained. Mm -hmm. I think it's almost the most important priority, or priority right. in life. And that's, that's certainly my opinion. It's really a, it's no longer a diversion from life, but it's really that's what we want life to be at all times, entertaining. Mm -hmm. so. and one of the things that I wanted to sort of um, explore is the difference between being entertained and entertaining ourselves. Mm. Mm. Um, because I do think we, we you know, as, a, as people like to be occupied. Yes. Um, wh where do you see the difference between those two things? Yeah, well I think, uh, good question, good mm. point. Uh, sitting in front of a TV or uh, uh, in front of YouTube or a computer mm -hmm. uh, and just being entertained is a very passive uh, exercise really. Mm -hmm. and. Okay, and there's a place for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think when we kind of do other things, like really uh, trying to entertain ourselves, mm -hmm. whether it's instead of just observing uh, a sporting event, actually participating in a sporting event, mm -hmm. or observing uh, a concert or actually playing music. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there are, these are more active things, and I believe these are really better for us mm -hmm. you know, a, as a person, really. I think it's much more uh, enriching, I think, over time, rather mm -hmm. than just you know, sitting around. So I think. This uh, clearly, are, I think we have a need to be entertained. But you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. We'd either be a, a passive recipient yes. of entertainment, or we could do it ourselves. And I think uh, the, the media, uh, I think the entertainment industry is so captivating mm -hmm. that I think it really has, I think, grabbed us to the point that I think people spend more time being entertained than actually doing the harder work mm -hmm. of entertaining themselves. And then, where does interest move into the category of obsession? Mm. Good, another good question. Uh, it's when it's actually what you're doing, I think, is starting to have a harmful effect on you. Mm -hmm. And well, you know, it could be dramatic or maybe not so dramatic. Mm -hmm. uh, or, so when I think, I believe that it's become an obsession mm -hmm. uh, because, again, uh, let's just take, uh, let's take alcohol for a minute. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a place for drinking. Mm -hmm. But when it kind of a person drinks so much, it's hurting them. And then mm -hmm. it becomes a problem, whether you want to call it an addiction or an obsession or, or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, or even uh, I'll say playing golf. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone you know, has to play golf every single solitary weekend, Saturday and Sunday, to the mm -hmm. point it's hurting their relationship with their loved yeah. one, well, that's a problem. Right. So I think with this whole entertainment piece, although yeah. that's maybe traditionally doesn't get th doesn't get uh, looked at like a, an addiction. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it really has been because I think it's really uh, taking over our lives. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of research with younger people that uh, they really believe that kind of sitting around all the uh, electronic media, mm -hmm. television, just being entertained probably contributes to the obesity problem in our society. Mm -hmm. uh, probably type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. again, eventual cardiac disease. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that, it, uh, it, it, I, I believe it kind of, uh, to me it looks like an obsession or an addiction. Mm -hmm. uh,
Mm-hmm. Um, it, it does sound like that. And, and um, in a therapeutic session, mm -hmm. uh, setting, how would you say that becoming more aware of this mm -hmm. would help someone move, mm -hmm. make gains, basically, therapeutic gains? Yeah. Well, okay, mm -hmm. most people, in fact, I haven't met uh, anybody who really yeah. has come to see me yeah. as, as a psychologist and said, here's the problem. Uh, oh, no, oh. I meant that you might, you oh. might discover that in the oh, with somebody. course of, yeah. Oh, I understand uh, what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, and it really comes up a lot. Yeah. And, and, and the question is, uh, how might that be addressed or looked at? Yeah. Uh, well, part of my book, uh, a piece mm -hmm. of it was kind of to wake people up, to look at themselves through a little different lens. Yeah. Uh, but if it really came up in a session, it was something someone wanted to kind of look at, mm -hmm. that is, you know, I spend an awful lot of time, yeah. you know, glued to the tube, mm -hmm. or my computer, or looking at YouTube videos, or on Facebook, or on Instagram, or, mm -hmm. or all that kind of stuff. And I might just have a discussion with them. I mean, wait, is, is this the best use of your time? And what do you think? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell, tell someone it isn't. Right. But I would at least have them try and at least look at it as, how much uh -huh. time are you spending on this? Uh -huh. Is that a problem? You know, what do you like yeah. about it? Perhaps mm -hmm. are, are there problems with this? And help them to kind of weigh it out a little bit and kind of begin to look at it perhaps through a uh, slightly different perspective mm -hmm. and see if they want to make a change in their life. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, and in what kind of ways can it be harmful other than sitting there mm -hmm. in the obes obesity in, a, in, in terms of what is emphasized um, okay. for, to make somebody a celebrity? Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, is... Children now, I think, are, mm -hmm. are really just uh, very involved in this kind of thing, very involved in wanting to be a star themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I think now a, a lot of interest at least seems to get placed on oh, maybe doing something on Facebook, mm -hmm. get a lot of likes, get a lot of comments, mm -hmm. uh, or posting and you know, doing something on Instagram or just uh, a YouTube video and to be, for it to become viral and mm -hmm. to really become known. And I, I think a concern is that uh, Children are really more interested, and a lot of people are just becoming known, just mm -hmm. to be, this public recognition versus what they're really doing to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a concern because I think there's a lot of wonderful things uh, people could do, mm -hmm. might not get necessarily recognition or, or public recognition in the way a, a cute yeah. little video uh, gets. Right. But uh, uh, I believe it could be really better for society, better for themselves, really. And I think a concern is now that people are just going for the recognition versus what they're really doing to. Uh, to really get it, really, as mm -hmm. become more, more paramount than you know than mm -hmm. actually what they really did, actually. Yeah. yeah. Do you think there's any difference between um, introverts and extroverts mm -hmm. in terms of how much they would want um, to either be a celebrity mm -hmm. or to be interested in celebrity sure. lives? Well, I do think extroverts have much more an interest in an introvert. I mean, there's some people who mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they really shy away from it. They do not want that at all. Right. Uh, but extroverts do like it, and maybe there's mm -hmm. more extroverts than introverts. But uh, uh, there was actually a study that uh, they asked uh, people who are well-known and famous. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you a question. I mean, there are problems with being well-known and famous, right? Yeah, you get yeah. Your, your privacy and yeah. certain things like that. But when you ask them, mm -hmm. let me ask you a question. You know, are the pros that weigh the cons? And they mm -hmm. all said, yeah, the pros that weigh the cons. Really? Yeah, yeah they, okay. they don't mind it. You know, could uh -huh. be worse. They yeah. get a lot of so, public recognition, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of attention, and they get some benefits, I'm sure, although they give up their privacy. So uh, overall, yeah. uh, pros that weigh the cons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, is the idea of, um, of this public interest in celebrities, uh, is that because people have, because maybe people don't have much of a choice anymore. I mean, we don't like ask the media what to tell us about, they tell us and, mm. you know, I mean, it, it, it just seems to me that the media is sort of promoting this, maybe not consciously, but by what they, what they air. Oh, I think the media does promote it. I mean, mm -hmm. the media doesn't want this to change. I yeah. mean, entertainment business is, is a big business. So I uh -huh. do believe that the media, I mean, I, mean, uh, I don't really watch it, you know, the, the programs like E-Network or things like this that really focus on the lives of celebrities. Yeah. I mean, they really want to mm -hmm. uh, put this out there to kind of get people's interest. And certainly I think certain celebrities do hire publicists to mm -hmm. really uh, get them to be in, in, in the eye of the media and, and, to, mm -hmm. and, and to, so to keep, it, keep them fresh in people's minds. Mm -hmm. So I think the media plays an I mean, incredibly important role mm -hmm. in all this kind of thing, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Profound. I mean, you know, sort of almost creating an obsession because they're not offering other more quality either programs or on the news. Yeah, and, and I think what's happened too is you know, we have a need to be entertained. Mm -hmm. And what, I think what's occurred over time is, and I'm not sure what comes first, but I think the more we, the more we get, okay. the more we want. Mm -hmm. The more we want, 
the more we get. Mm -hmm. So we kind of feed off each other. It's like a, a symbiotic relationship. Because mm. uh, now, I mean, what's on TV now, it's so much more you know, sex and violence and crime mm -hmm. and blood. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, when I think days of yesteryear, the shows were, you know, Leave it to Beaver or something, or Dennis <laughs> yeah. the Menace or something like this, you know, Dick Van Dyke. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I do think w it really has fed off each other. And I don't know where it's going to go eventually, but again, uh, even mm -hmm. look at the, some of the movies now with the special effects and everything going on now, I think, uh, uh, you know, again, uh, the, 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 the more we get, we habituate to earlier forms of entertainment, so we mm -hmm. want more and more and more, and, and the media industry is certainly, uh, uh, the entertainment industry is going to give us that to kind of fulfill mm -hmm. our need. And, and you may also made me think, I think, a piece of this, too. Mm -hmm. and I, I may be wrong, but uh, there might be more of a void, I think, in people now than mm -hmm. there was in the past, uh, because I think... Uh, it gets complicated, but yeah. I do think uh, back re even prior to the Industrial Revolution, really, mm -hmm. life was work, work was life. Yes. That was everything, really, and you were much busier. Mm -hmm. When I think things changed, I think people then started working, you know, you know, eight to five or nine to five or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the question is, it created this personal space of now what I do with my life. Yeah. And, 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 f and family life and work life became separated. Mm -hmm. So then you had this kind of sphere of, you know, personal fulfillment, like what do I do now? And I think right. sometimes for many people, not everybody, but they lost a sense of fulfillment through work. Mm -hmm. uh, because the assembly line versus, you know, I was responsible for the entire shoe or the entire piece of silverware or whatever, mm -hmm. or the entire piece of clothing. Right. So I think it's created a void in people, I think. And I think mm -hmm. uh, the way that gets filled is one way is consumption, mm -hmm. buying things. Yeah. But the other way I think is uh, entertainment has filled that void for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I think you also were mentioning in your book that uh, that for people who uh, have problems with addiction, one of their problems is what to do with that time that isn't spent on their uh, mm. addiction. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah, boredom. Well, boredom is a huge piece. I think a mm -hmm. lot of people. I think it's a underappreciated emotion. Mm. And people hate to be bored. Yeah. And I think uh, why I think as you mentioned earlier, people mm -hmm. can learn how to entertain themselves, which yes. is great. But uh -huh. when you have this kind of uh, media right in front of you, which yeah. is so engaging, mm -hmm. uh, it just has grabbed people mm -hmm. to the point that is, you know, maybe they could find other things to do, but it's like, it's right in front of the person's face, and they just go with it, really. Mm -hmm. And it is, it, it is engaging. I mean, you know, yeah. movie making has, t has been taken to a different level, and TV shows, I mean, even commercials mm -hmm. are like, people want to see the Super Bowl commercials time and time again, you know. Oh, yeah. so, uh, uh, so I think what's happened is, it's just grabbed us so, to the mm -hmm. point that I think people don't do the harder work of finding other things to do to kind of be more fulfilling. They, you know, they have to watch their TV show or, or, you know, if they're not home, they have to kind of DVR so they can see it later and so mm -hmm. I'm going to spend Saturday afternoon and seeing all the episodes I've missed out on. Yeah. That's okay. But mm. I think a person could think about maybe other, other things maybe they uh, mm -hmm. could do with their time. And so what about someone who is um, struggling with an addiction to alcohol, for instance, um, and they're, they're working with, you know, working on, um, being abstinent from alcohol, but mm. I, and then you know, and then they have this issue of time. All of a sudden, all of this time used to be spent mm. drinking in bars, you know, whatever. Yes. However, they did it, um, and then they have this free time. Are they more likely to want to sort of be passively mm. entertained? And if they are, does that affect their success? Yeah, a, a great question. I mean, uh -huh. a lot of times in early recovery, I mean, therapists will talk to their their patients about mm -hmm. what do you do with your free time? Yeah, and. People need to stay busy. People mm -hmm. need to find engaging activities. Yeah. And uh, I don't think, I mean, I think one element might be, oh, I could watch a movie. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, people, I think a lot of times therapists will talk with people about getting really active, mm -hmm. maybe an exercise program or taking up an, uh, a hobby, mm -hmm. maybe something they used to do which they s stopped doing and they want to kind of pick up again or something mm -hmm. they've always wanted to do and never did. So I think the encouragement is to get really active. I mean, there's a place for, you know, TV watching. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's I think, a lot more I think people could do that is more engaging mm -hmm. and might give them a greater fulfillment in the long run. Mm -hmm. And does it usually give them a greater fulfillment well, I think if it, they do that? I th well, I think it's critical. Yeah, I think it does. I mm -hmm. think it's very important to do. Uh, even yeah. things like uh, volunteering. There's a wealth of research that shows mm -hmm. people who volunteer mm -hmm. and do something positive for society really augments their self-esteem and their self-concept. Mm -hmm. And among older people, it actually increases, uh, decreases mortality. Mm -hmm. So uh, so uh, often people are encouraged to kind of do et those other kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, your, your book is sort of, um, you know, exploring this subject. Can you tell us how you've structured the book? Sure. Uh, well, when I thought about it, I mean, what mm -hmm. first got me to think about this was, you know, I would, uh, I just couldn't understand, you uh -huh. know, why uh, people were so obsessed with these people. You know, I would go yeah. into like a drugstore, I'd see these pictures of people in these magazines, I, didn't, I had no idea who they were. Right. I'd ask somebody <laughs> who it was, the latest bachelor, the latest bachelorette, or uh, who knows, or. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know who Kim Kardashian was many years ago. You know? Yeah. Now everybody knows who she is. Uh, <laughs> so I really just wanted to understand this. So when I kind of just started thinking about this, mm -hmm. uh, well, I had to understand people. Mm -hmm. you know, what is it about people that's so, so, so relevant to this thing? But you mm -hmm. think a lot of these human traits have been around forever. So this didn't always exist many years ago. Right. So I thought, okay, so there's people, which is very important. Mm -hmm. But we all live in a social context. Uh, and there are certain things that impinge upon us and that uh, uh, collide with who we are as people. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking about our, our, how, how society has changed from what it was like years ago. Mm -hmm. And then, so the first part of the book is people. Mm -hmm. And so I, I talk about many, uh, about five or six universal traits that we all have. And I, mm -hmm. I mentioned some of them a little earlier. And then I talk about some changes in our environment that have taken place. Mm -hmm. And then in the part three, I talk about the perfect storm, mm -hmm. how I guess us as people have collided with these changes in our environment to, to create the spectacle. Mm -hmm. So it's really part one of people, part two is our current social scene, mm -hmm. and part three is the perfect storm. And mm -hmm. then I have a, uh, the last part is just called the epilogue, and that's, a, you know, I think it's titled, Is There a Way Out? Mm. And I try, is there a way at least this could be tempered a little bit? Because I mm -hmm. don't think it's the uh, best trend uh, right. in society. Right. Uh, is, are, are there any like, correlations between the amount of television people watch, or children, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking actually more of children, the amount of um, television children watch and how likely they would be um, to become obsessed? Uh, well, certainly, I think the more they watch, they will. I mean, mm -hmm. research in this area is fairly new, actually. Mm -hmm. There's a few things on this written by psychologists, yeah. but a lot of the stuff around celebrities have written by sociologists or anthropo anthropo mm -hmm. anthropologists. So, uh, what there, there is some uh, discussion about, though. Uh, I thought the question you were going to ask is a relationship mm -hmm. between uh, uh, video watching and TV watching and uh, happiness. Mm -hmm. And while it's true that uh, the more people watch, the less happy they are, mm -hmm. it's hard to say whether that's causal or not. Right. It could be correlational. Mm -hmm. Maybe unhappy people may watch TV, right. a lot of TV, because they have uh -huh. nothing else to do. Or it could be maybe TV watching causes unhappiness. So regardless, though, mm -hmm. uh, there seems to be a correlation, at least, between uh, overall mm -hmm. happiness and uh, amount of uh, uh, TV watching. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there's other ways to, to learn about um, celebrities, you know, magazines, you yes. know, um, th uh, that kind of thing. But um, I just sort of wondered if the more passive you become, a person mm. becomes, the more likely they are to sort of latch on to something mm. a little bit unreal. Because basically celebrities, I think, have created the celebrity part of themselves through kind of false, you know, yeah. uh, through something their publicists sort of made them into, not yes. really who they are. Um, yeah. yeah. We really have no idea what these people are like. They're yeah. Not only are they made by publicists, right. but they're made by I mean, even the movie-making industry or, or TV industry. We see yeah. somebody on, on a movie or TV that's mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. You know, are they really cool? Yeah. Who really knows? Right. But I think uh, an interesting line uh, uh, mm -hmm. to discuss here is uh, there are some people who's, who've stated that perhaps the human mind has not caught up to modern technology. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, when we see uh, a celluloid image of somebody, mm -hmm. we think that's the real person yeah. versus, versus maybe not really the real person. Right. So I think it's very interesting from an evolutionary point of view, mm -hmm. maybe we just haven't caught up to kind of uh, uh, this whole celluloid world. Right. And, uh, so because always we, we think the person we see is mm -hmm. a really uh, uh, interesting person. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was a role, right. but maybe they weren't that. Maybe they're not that <laughs> interesting people. Yeah. You know, it's, but uh, we, we get fooled by it very easily. Yeah, we do. In mm. fact, I think um, actors who have played on medical shows get asked medical questions. I'm like, I don't know. You right. know that's not I, actually who I am. I mentioned Marcus <laughs> Welby. I think uh -huh. thousands of letters about asking for you know, for uh, for uh, medical advice. Which really is fascinating. <laughs> really. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the other things I wanted to um, ask you about is, uh, do you see a difference between being a celebrity and being famous? Yes. Uh, well, I think celebrities are famous. Yes. But you could be famous by being a celebrity, mm -hmm. uh, certainly, because uh, the difference is, I mean, I think there's some politicians who might be famous, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. maybe CEOs of certain companies might be famous, but yeah. they're not really celebrities, because I think celebrity mm -hmm. is people have a tremendous interest in them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a when you think what makes a celebrity, it's, it's kind of a very interesting thing. But it's, I yeah. think it's a combination of obviously public exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think being charismatic. Mm -hmm. I think beauty is very important. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, and how much you flaunt who you are and you know, how much yeah. interest there is in you. So it's very interesting what makes a celebrity uh, mm -hmm. versus someone who's just famous. But, but yeah. I do think they are very different, actually. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was sort of, that was my impression, too. Yeah. Um, and are there any in, inadvertent celebrities, <laughs> people who become that and don't want to be? Oh, I think, I think it's probably happened all the time. You know, I, yeah. I don't really study celebrities about yeah. that. But I'm yeah. sure there are people who really never set out to mm -hmm. really uh, become a celebrity. I think there's some, in fact, I've read some stories actually. Sometimes I'll read an article in the newspaper mm -hmm. about uh, a singer or a songwriter. Yeah. And they started doing their thing. Before you know it, there's a great interest in them and said, mm -hmm. I never, this is not my intention by any right. stretch. I just, uh, I, just, I just write music, okay. really. Yeah. Uh, so I think it does happen, uh, uh -huh. for sure. But some people really, I think, mm -hmm. do go for the public recognition. But I think there right. are people who really just, uh, it just happened inadvertently, you know, mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on getting public exposure. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, essentially, the, the focus of your book is people's obsession, not the celebrities themselves. And I do understand right. that. I think we should, you know, you know um, make that part yes. clear. Um, you know, one of the things I think you mentioned in your book, too, is that the, the less people actually know about mm. the real lives of celebrities, um, the more obsessed they become with them because yeah. they can create their own drama around I think them. That's, I, I think that's true. Yeah. I, I do talk mm -hmm. about that. And I think we yeah. get snippets of people. Yeah. You don't really know them. Mm -hmm. And also, and they, if they change all the time, yeah. how they look, how, yeah. you know, and I think there's some celebrities that have done that, really. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes you never know how Lady Gaga's going to appear, uh -huh. or how Madonna's going to appear, I mentioned. Right. Or Michael Jackson changes uh, his image. Uh -huh. But there are people, I think, the less we know, mm -hmm. it just grabs our interest and, and uh, you know, our, our, mm -hmm. our voyeuristic quality, I think. Right. We want to know more about them. The more we know somebody, okay, we know who they are. Yeah. Not a huge deal. But mm -hmm. we know a little, hardly anything about okay. somebody. It kind of stimulates our imagination, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, in some ways, you could look at that in a somewhat positive um, view because maybe that means people feel that they do have to actually have, a do, have to do a little bit of the entertaining, you know, that they need to create a little bit rather than have it all fed to them. So the more that's fed to them, maybe that actually pushes mm -hmm. them away from the obsession um, than if there's just little snippets and then they can create their own little story around it. Yeah, it's an interesting yeah. point. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but sometimes, you, but the information you glean, yeah. it's hard to know, is that yeah. true or not true or whatever, yeah. but it's an interesting point you make there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so in writing this book, what, what was your um, main goal, would you say? Okay. First of all, like, my goal was just to, I was just perplexed. Mm -hmm. I like to understand things that happen in society. and just, I like to understand mm -hmm. people. And my, my first goal was really, I mm -hmm. can understand what this is about. Why yeah. do people care about people who have contributed, mm -hmm. many people, not everybody, but yeah. contributed not that much to society. So my first right. goal was just to understand this for myself. Right. Okay. And then as I got into this, mm -hmm. I just wanted to share my thoughts with other people. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to kind of begin to wake people up a little bit. Mm -hmm. That is, okay, uh, you could kind of go through your life just being uh, uh, obsessed with celebrities and wanting to know who these people are. Yeah. And there might be other things you could do with your time. Right. And as I kind of, as the book evolved, uh -huh. I become increasingly clear, not only are we obsessed with celebrities, but with being entertained in general. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we're not entertained at all, I mean, we don't care about celebrities, but if, yeah. if, we, if we, and we could be obsessed with being entertained, but not with mm -hmm. celebrities. But I really, both of those uh, things I think are very true, mm -hmm. both being obsessed with being entertained and celebrities. So uh, uh, as, as, as it evolved, mm -hmm. I just really wanted to kind of uh, help people to kind of look at themselves through, through a, a different lens and yeah. to see if this is what I want to do for my life or might there be other things that might be yeah. better for right. my soul. Well, the book, your book mm. does give a lot of insight, mm. and I really hope that people will read it and Thank gain you. some personal insight, um, hopefully, um, to make a better quality out of their mm. own lives. And yeah. I want to thank you for being with us today. Well, thank uh, we you for having me. I time. enjoyed our conversation. From the staff of 22 yeah. City View, I'm Diane Goshgarian. Thank you for being with us. And thank you. That um, uh, half an hour that um, was very, uh, you know, helpful for me to be yeah. able to sort of ask some of the questions I was, or uh, share some.